Hey, it's Rex Brown for Pantera. You're watching Loudbar. Everyone, it's Joe from Loudwire, and I'm sitting next to Rex Brown and Joe Hiron. Got it. And Hiron. you can see what's in front of us. We're going to be talking about a vulgar display of Pantera, the new photo book that's out. Comprehensive takes a look through the entire history of Pantera, even the early days, the glam stuff. So really cool. Thank you guys so much for sitting down with us, giving us some of your time today. No problem, Joe. So let's, uh, let's jump right into the book here. I want to talk about a couple of my favorite pictures in here. I'm a big fan of the glam era as well. So, what do you think of when you look at this guy right here? I like Back that the dude. Glam I don't era. like that guy. <laughs> so no, why I is like this? both guys. They're, they're so why not this me. one a little bit more? Uh, and that was a little bit uh, tire. I think there. I have got a little overdressed for that pic. <laughs> yeah, it looks like the scarf you have on now moved down to the leg and yeah, this all was over actually the place. shot before that one. So the the, hmm. the, the glamification was. <laughs> yeah. So it wasn't working its way down, yeah. it was still well, working its, its way, way up. up. And then it took a very steep dive down. <laughs> and then it went sure. way back to where it should have been in the yeah. first place. <laughs> well, we could have sat in our garage and done nothing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? For us to be seen and do what we did, we played you know, six nights a week, sometimes four or five sets a night. You know, and um, you just, if, to be in Texas, to be noticed and to, for anything else, you had to wear this kind of crap it's just what you had to do you know and but it didn't change the way that we were writing or you know anything else it musically it didn't affect us at all it just we had to put that shit on every night you know mm -hmm. that's that's the only thing that sucked but but at a certain point we you know when we got philip in the band we finally just said you know screw it we're not going to play any more of these covers but the covers helped us you know they helped us bond and, and musically get us to where you know um we were tight you know tight 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 that's what struck me the, the first time I ever saw this band. I saw them live in 1982 when I first went to go interview for my job in Fort Worth. And then in 83, I saw them all summer long at the Roxy. And just the chemistry and the tightness this band had. I had never seen a, another a band, a like band like, that like this. It had that just precision and just... And it was instant. You know, the comma was... I, look, I'm, I, I knew, you got to remember, I knew Dime before you knew how to play bar chord. So mm -hmm. he's calling Q-tip. Um, because <laughs> he had this, he had this perm, and it was just real tight and I'm real skinny, skinny man. <laughs> Bless. And uh, and so, and then he he, he went in, this, in a in the bedroom, and like I think he was like 15, and he started winning all the guitar contests and everything else, and he came out this, you know, this is the Blizzard, of, you know, the first two Aussie records, and he just came out. It was just inside of him. He just didn't know how to get it out. Um, his dad was left-handed, so it was harder for him to pick it out. But once he just started mm -hmm. being himself, oh my God, yeah. Now, is there a favorite photo that you have in the book? Maybe something that took you by surprise? You're like, wow, I forgot about that. The ones that, that are really deep to me are the ones, you know, of course, of Don, because he's no longer with us. And, and uh, the interaction that we had, we, uh, you know, um, we, we all just knew each other so well, and we knew how to play off of each other and, and, uh, and everything else. And some of the, some of the, the live pictures of, of where, you know, we're, we're sitting and looking eye to eye and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the definitely, pick on the forehead, yeah, the pick so. on the forehead. Mm -hmm. That was just like every night we did that, you know. Um, it's just a ritual that we did, and, and it's, uh, you know, he's still dearly missed. And, but uh, this, this really, you know, Don, Don was, uh, um, you know, we, we we could be playing, you know, all these these hockey rings. They all look the same, but Dom would always have some something that would make you know the day special, you know. And that, that's what kept us. I think that's what it kept us sane, and also kept us uh, pulling together. And you know, when somebody was down, you know, we'd always, we'd have to drag each other up. You know, mm -hmm. um, that's just part of the deal. And and. Uh, it was a phenomenal, phenomenal band. There's just a lot of like really just goofy pictures, and it shows just kind of how much fun you had. I then remember that shot. This was one of my favorite. You remember this one? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so it was what was the happening? last shot of the day out, wasn't it? Well, we they were about to do the Foundations Forum in uh, L.A. That's the the one you guys I'm trying to remember if it was the first one or the one where you guys played it. I think it was the first one. It, you guys didn't play it this one, but you were just going there to, to just promote, hang out. just to hang out oh and my stuff God. like Paul that. Paul Diano, yeah. 
Actually, and then they were going to do the the uh, Cemetery Gates video the next day uh, there in L.A. because it, they just right. wrapped it, every, everything mm -hmm. together. And I just wanted to go do a new photo shoot with them. I'd flown in. For, I was living in San Francisco at the time, and so I was going to do some stuff at the video shoot. But we said let's do some other stuff. And so being in uh, near the airport area, LA, LAX, we're near the ocean. So let's go down to the ocean. We went, and then we're doing a shoot, and we did some pretty standard stuff. And then for some reason, as Dime usually wants to clown around, he said, "Dude, let me tie my hair to, to yours, dude." And so they did, and just you know, and it's just Dime being Dime and just mm -hmm. coming up with something crazy and to, getting to, us to even go on a pier in Santa Monica was like pulling teeth <laughs> you know right. Philip wouldn't eat I'm not doing it you know so you said you're hanging out with Paul Diano earlier that day yeah uh, that during that weekend it was pretty crazy man it was pretty insane yeah, these were the first couple foundations forums and they they were they Bob's were. party and Conquer were just getting some you know just everybody was just attending these things so it was mm -hmm. just crazy we met that. so many people during that little run, and nobody knew who we were, right. and it was so <laughs> yeah. it was so cool. Because we were just sitting back going, "Wait, you <laughs> find out who we wait, are." Wait, <laughs> wait, vulgar, boom, bye. So this one yeah. was in Russia, Correct. and you just look at these kids' faces, and it doesn't really look like maybe they're particularly metal fans, but they're there for a reason. You see Dime smiling here. It seems like it kind of personifies. You know, Dime was kind of a, a man of the fans. Joe can so, say this though, not cancel. And it and as I did in in a uh, another media thing previously, because they asked about one of my favorite Pantera photos, and this this is one of them because Dime was a kid at heart, and I think that's what really comes out in these images, mm -hmm. you know, and and the way he could relate to these little kids. We were just walking around the uh, sort of the market area, the kiosks and all that kind of stuff, just doing touristy things when we were in Russia. And these kids were just either going to school or being let out of school and they saw Dime and his, his pink beard really. They were like, yeah, they were like, yeah. We're it was a big group. They, they, they might have been yeah. going on a field trip or something right. and they saw his pink beard and it was just instant. Like they were just, there. You, the, their eyes lit up and then he, and then he <laughs> just then played off of that with his video camera, and I mm -hmm. think Bobby Tongs had his as well. Actually, I think Bobby Tongs, uh, the footage ended up in the in one of the home videos. But just his interaction, and like, and as I just said, I mean, he was such a kid at heart that he could just relate, and they were just having fun, and he was just interacting with them and stuff. And yeah, so, I mean, you look at a smile here; yeah. it looks like you could just Photoshop this onto one of the kids. Like it's right. just that innocent cherub well, smile. Well, it just he fits in. And yeah. then he was, you know, teaching them how to that's how to give me five, give me ten. So that's what they're doing there. And you know, it's like you have to remember this is you. two weeks after the coup. When we flew yeah. into Moscow, you know, it was it was like a sixty watt light bulb at ten, you know, at noon. Mm. You know, there was there was no there was no neon signs, no advertisements. It, there was nothing. People were standing in line for bread. You know, it was horrible. And this was kind of the transition the from the trans communist mm -hmm. era to the more democratic uh, democracy and stuff, yeah. Where did this whole idea start um, with Joe? Obviously, I had this great collection of Pantera imagery. Mm -hmm. uh, all of it was in pretty much slide form, uh, and so I had to digitize it, which I did. Very tedious process, Must getting it all scanned. Ruling. And so I wanted to have a good body of work to then go and show uh, book publishers, which I started doing in 2012. Got a couple of them interested in it. Unfortunately, the economic situation with bookstores and book chains and the whole deal was kind of on the decline. Mm -hmm. Borders went out of business. And so it must have been interesting for you because we all know about the CD fallout in the music industry, but now it's happening with the books too. So you kind of got to experience the other side of what you've been witnessing. Exactly. and. I'm just glad that I've had somebody with the confidence to know that they could put out a big coffee table book and there would still be an audience for it. Yeah. And that's what Jacob saw and continuing to hold on to the project and take it to his new company. And I believe Lesser Gods, which is what my book was the, the first release on it, they're really, their whole focus is music titles. And that's great to see a company continue to focus on music even though they know mm -hmm. that books aren't necessarily you know the the best selling thing but they have the confidence they want to tell musician stories photographer stories and continue to tell then all the sexy pictures of us you know in the first 30 pages yeah, yeah. there we go <laughs> yes